Hi, uh, my, my name's uh, Eric Graf. I'm a PhD student at uh, MIT at the Center for Civic Media. And uh, I want to ask who here has heard of Strike Deck? Raise your hand. Strike Deck. How many people have heard of Rolling Jubilee? Raise your hand. Uh, how many people watched this video last week uh, where John Oliver talked about buying debt, forgiving $15 million in medical debt? How many people are aware of the controversy that has unfolded since then? A few people. Um, it's because uh, the community, um, Strike Debt, the organization that kind of started doing this work with Rolling Jubilee, uh, actually worked with John Oliver's uh, show uh, on this project to study debt buying and come up with this spectacle of having them buy a bunch of, of debt on the secondary market and then uh, forgiving that debt for the folks that have incurred it. And he, in that piece uh, apparently decided editorially to keep out the connection to Occupy Wall Street and strike debt and this much more um, kind of radical vision of going against the debt system, actually resisting uh, the idea that people need to take on debt, um, which is what that group is now trying to organize through their debt collective movement. So what are they actually trying to do? Where does this actually come from? Well, this, or this organization actually wrote a book about it. Um, trying to help people understand the ways that they could resist debt. And the people's bailout is this idea where they could crowdsource, crowdsource money together um, and buy it on the secondary market and actually forgive those debts. Kind of take this right to the marketplace. And then they're also looking at how people can band together to refuse debt en masse to try and take down this debt system, saying that this is um, an inappropriate way that we should function society. And then organizing people to debt together to share their stories and understand how this is an issue that we need to come together. Here's a version of a slide you may have seen earlier uh, that Ethan presented. And uh, what I want to highlight here is that this idea of buying this debt on the secondary market and forgiving it is a kind of market-based intervention, right? It's trying to say, we're actually going to go into the market and change how it works. And maybe that'll draw attention to this issue and change that system. However, one thing that the strike debt folks have repeatedly argued against their critics when they did this movement is that this is actually about norms. This is actually about changing people's minds, that this system should be in place whatsoever. It's about using a spectacle to draw attention to an issue and help people change their perspective on it. So where did this come from? It came out of Occupy Wall Street, the original Zuccotti Park occupation with a set of activists, Tom Skokie, Michael White from Adbusters, and then the Occupy Student Debt Campaign, which was the group within Occupy Wall Street that started coming together around this as an issue that they thought they should take action on. And this is uh, Andrew Ross, who's a sociologist who was working with them on this issue, researching it, and trying to launch this as a, as a project within um, the group to say, we should be taking this on as a core issue of Occupy Wall Street. And they were collecting stories from people on a Tumblr page. It's a really amazing catalog of people having this experience with student debt and how it you know, transformed their lives for the worse. Um, and this was one of the most powerful um, groups to come out of Occupy Wall Street and transcended the fall of, of, of the uh, occupation. And so the group that originally started organizing this work um, went around the country and had these debt assemblies, starting in New York City, going to places like Portland or uh, like, like Oakland, California, and having people come together and talk about why this issue was so important to them and how they could do something about it. It was one of the core pillars of the se September 17th march of the following year after the, the occupation, uh, commemorating the, uh, the original start of Occupy Wall Street, in which they were trying to bring attention to this issue. And this was the dawning of Strike Debt. The organization for this parade is when they came together, formed an organization called Strike Debt to really make this happen, and started thinking about a tactic that Thomas Gokey and M Michael White had started dreaming up where they could buy this on the secondary market and actually get in the business of debt as a way to draw people's attention to it. And so they organized this over the summer and launched this as a telethon that would happen on November 15th. And they started putting together media around this, launched a website that encouraged people to do kind of social media bombing, right? The classic, like, let's tweet at these celebrities and get them to take notice of this. When they launched their initial ask for donations, their goal was $50,000. But within 48 hours, thanks to uh, a set of Tumblr reposts, including Will Wheaton, um, that, was, that was already accomplished. 
And by the time they had their telethon, it was well, well, well above that number. And they actually ran it like a telethon. They had a bar that they rented in Lower Manhattan, and they had these folks come together and actually buy tickets. And then people would call in, you know, the idea that they would call in, and, but they were actually pledging online. Overall, during the course of, of, of the year and more that they did this, they raised $700,000 online and forgave thir <coughs> almost $32 million worth of debt, which is amazing. But the critics were on them. They were saying, this is not a sustainable way to address this debt system. And once again, they said, this isn't what we're doing this for. This is to draw awareness to a thing that is corrupt and wrong and shouldn't be a part of our society. And so that's where we get to their, their tactics and how it's uh, um, catalyzed them to the moment that they are in now. That it's about debt refusal as a mechanism of social and political change and how they can bind together as a debt collective and so if you go to their website where they posted that blog post about John Oliver, you can see where people have pledged $182 million worth of debt that they would like to refuse together in mass in order to go against this. And so if there's one thing that you take away, you have to remember that there is a wide range of tactics here that work on different levers of change. And it's not always obvious which ones uh, go to which directions, um, but that there are also amazing things that have come out of Occupy Wall Street that have been incredibly innovative and worth taking note of.